I have dedicated my professional career to the study and control of arthropods. Hi. So I have started looking through some of my old videos um, as as some of my uh, subscribers that have been with me for a while know. Um, when I first started on YouTube, I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Not that I know now either, so, you know, any jokes aside. Um, but I, I had a very, very crappy system for recording videos and making videos. And uh, I not only learned a lot, but I've also updated a little bit. I still have crappy equipment, but I... Um, you know, I've I've made some improvements, at least to where my videos are watchable now, and they weren't watchable before. I'm still not going to use a script or any of that. Okay, I'm, but that's a whole separate issue. Um, so I am going to remake a series that I did some time ago, uh, called uh, it was a critique of Dr. David Menton's Lucy, She's No Lady. The originals uh, were posted in eight parts by a YouTube user Rafik. GL. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it's R A F I K G L. Um, although there's, I've seen other versions of the same talk, uh, you know, where he's given the talk at other places. Uh, but I'm I'm doing the one that was specifically from the DVD called Lucy She's No Lady, put out by Answers in Genesis. So I'm going to go through this. Um, I I really I'm not sure how this is going to match up with each part. Um, because some sections are going to go faster than others, okay? Um, and I'm not, I di I'm not even watching my old videos on the subject. I'm simply starting from scratch. I went through and I watched the entire series, and I uh, took pages and pages and pages of notes that I'm going to go through. I would love to cut and clip the videos, uh, but I'm afraid of you know, having them censored because of that, so I'm not going to do it. So... Uh, he starts off, you know, talking about, you know, he, he introduces himself, and I'm going to go through some of the more relevant. I'm, there's a lot more in this video than I'm going to be going through. I'm, I'm addressing things that really caught my attention or that I happen to know about. Um, as I've mentioned, probably I have an extensive literature of human evolution. Um, besides my skulls, I also have a lot, a lot of material. So. So um, he starts off kind of talking about that Lucy, she's no lady. And then he says that actually is more literal now because scientists are now saying that she's probably a male. Um, I'm not really critiquing that. I would love to get a citation. I have yet to see one. It certainly wasn't published in any anthropological journals that I had access to or that I keep track of. Um, I happen to have a personal, not personal, I, I'm fascinated with, with uh, afarensis and this fossil Lucy and all of it. So, um, that's that's a new one to me. I've heard that accusation thrown out in the past, back when it was first newly discovered that it, you know, how do we know it's a female? Well, it could be male, but it's pretty much established, as far as I can tell, that it's a female. And that's not new information. That was, I think, just for laughs. Um, he talks about this accusation, and I I, actually, I agree with him. Honestly, I you know I do agree. Um, he makes a comment about how evolutionists always argue with creationists when creationists say that Darwin said man came from monkeys, and you know we. And I've seen that, and I honestly get a little irritated with that myself. Um, when a creationist says, you know, you think we came from monkeys, and you know that's like, oh, you're so stupid, you know, you know whatever. Um, I, and I I know that the person you're talking to, the the creationist that you're talking to doesn't know why that's not exactly accurate um, but they also don't know why that's kind of true as well I mean they're, they're saying they're speaking an ignorant statement and I understand that that's what we're getting irritated about but how, I, I don't see why how it's really fundamentally untrue um, Darwin did indeed claim that humans descended from the Simidae um, which the family of old world monkeys he did indeed say that um, the reality is, is that uh, as far as we know from, um, you know, like from the, the Egyptopithecus and such, uh, it, it, it morphologically, in, in every respect, apes are a clade within the old world monkeys. So apes evolved from monkeys. Uh, we evolved from apes. We actually are apes. Um, so 
the hominid clade evolved from within the ape clade. The ape clade evolved from within the monkey clade. Ultimately, we evolved from monkeys. Um, we would, our ancestor is, by every definition, an old world monkey. Um, so, I, I think we should kind of refrain from jumping all over that. I mean, I, I it, because. I have not seen any creationist able to defend that statement with the, the, how I explained it. Um, and, well, Menton, Menton did did a fair job of that. But um, most of them don't. They, like I said, they don't know why they're wrong and they don't know why they're right. I mean, you know, they're just making a statement. Um, it's because they don't know the difference between apes and monkeys. And I would assume that Dr. Menton does. Oh, oops. <laughs> he doesn't. <laughs> He says, you know, an ape is only a monkey with a tail. Or, an ape is only a monkey without a tail. That's what he said. Uh, you do know that there's a huge difference between monkeys and apes. Um, it has to do with the teeth. Um, the reason we know that Egyptopithecus was the first true ape, even though it was very, very monkey-like in a lot of respects, um, was because it had eight features. It had eight teeth. It had, um, I mean, yeah, it had some eight teeth. Um, had a few other things, but one of the big things that we can see, at least with the... I, I don't even know about Egyptopithecus, um, but I know with soon afterwards is this. Apes can do this. Apes can hang from trees by their arms. If you look at monkeys, they walk more like a dog. Their their arms go down underneath them. Not, I mean, they can, they're capable of some ranges of movements. This is, this is um, old world monkeys. Uh, so right there is a huge difference. Having not having tails um, is one characteristic of apes, but it's not like that's the only difference between the two. Um, a monkey without a tail is, you know, some of the some of the some of the uh, macaques that don't have tails. They're not apes just because they don't have tails. Okay, it's a big big difference there. So that was a little 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 on the ignorant side, but let it slide. Then he goes into this thing here, probably well, yeah this will match up with the part one pretty well he uh, cites a Gallup poll, about 45% of people believe in uh, creation, pure creationism God created it uh, 40% believe in a, some version of theistic evolution and the evolutionary view has less, holds less than 10% of Americans and then with a few some percentage undecided. And he sort of uses this as, you know, and yet that less than 10% is what dominates our schools and what dominates our textbooks and what dominates our universities. You know, and he's kind of looking at this. Um, really common flaw that's made by lay people, of which he's not a lay person. So um, I'm, I'm questioning why he would say something like this. He does know, he should know better. Uh, what we know to be true in science, in society, in the world is not determined by a popularity. It's not determined by polls, okay? I mean, I'm sure you remember whatever it was a few years ago when they did some poll where they found out that like 60% of Americans named uh, Kansas as Central America. You know, that kind of thing. Does that make Kansas Central America? Because, you know, should we teach half of the students in school that Kansas is part of Central America? No, we're not going to do that, right? It's retarded. It's stupid. It's wrong. Well, we don't do that. There's all people that think all kinds of things. If you polled your average... I mean, you've seen those, like, things that Americans believe. And I, I, I find a lot of those suspicious myself. I mean, it depends on, you know, who you ask and how you select, you know, your answers. Um, but nonetheless, the point is, is that a lot of people believe a lot of things that aren't true. Uh, we're not going to teach that as science, even if it's popular. Um, if you look, especially like I've seen lots of things about physics, you know, you know, people being pulled, like if you spin this object around and let it go, which direction is it going to, whatever. And most people using common sense get it wrong or whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure this scenario because you know Newtonian physics has has you know there's a lot of things that aren't they're sort of counterintuitive to what you would think most people believe it's in the wrong answer should we teach the wrong answer that kind of that's that's the the solution the thing to that so then he talks about uh, chance in evolution and about how the Field Museum in Chicago set up a little gambling casino to talk about chance in evolution and that is the subject of part two. <laughs>